have an idea in your mind of something you want and you deserve to get it. So how do you get there? Well, welcome to the Idea Space, a podcast devoted to helping you overcome frustration and make what you want a reality. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, high school teacher turned entrepreneur. Now I'm a business development coach. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, overwhelmed, or lost. Every week, I share topics, tools, and strategies to help you move toward that thing you want. Create time and energy to do the things you love, get clarity on what you really want and how to get there, and most importantly, stop feeling alone with your challenges. Whether you've wanted to create a better business, job, relationship, hobby, or self, I know there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it with confidence and clarity. Ready to have it? Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space Podcast. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, and today I'm talking about, well, a month I've been talking about time and how to create more time in our days. And I am kind of talking about alternative ways rather than calendaring or lists Uh, or systems. I'm really talking about what's going on in our mind to create more time for ourselves. And today is the third in a series of three of how to basically get more time so that you can have the thing you want. And I was at an event speaking about uh, self-care for caregivers. And somebody came up to me, he he was a dude. And he said, you know, we were talking about a couple of different things. And one of the things that struck me was he said, I just want to go play golf on a Wednesday afternoon. Now, this guy owns a successful, small, local company, brick and mortar business, makes a nice living for himself. His company is uh, well-respected and he's got a good team of people to help him. But he feels like he can't take any time off without his staff giving him a hard time. And frankly, I really understood what he was talking about we talked a little bit about the guilt last week. I had the same thing happen in my first business, which was, remember, the fitness studio. I had an employee who was hired to do the front desk tell me that she was lonely when I wasn't there. She said she had taken the job because she really liked the owners so much. And when the owners weren't there, she felt you know, a little, well, I could tell there was a little frustration, a little resentment, but she said she was tired of being all alone to do the work that I had hired her to do. And I almost lost my mind because between the guilt of actually hiring somebody and putting a boundary up and then the frustration of having that person say to me, but I need you here with me, I just had no idea how to respond to that. And the question came to me like, isn't this why we hire people so that we don't have to do the work ourselves so that we can have the freedom to go out into the world and and be the people we want to be and do the things we want to do? Isn't that the very reason that we delegate so that we can have some freedom? Because remember, freedom is usually the reason that people start a business in the first place. You know, we want to uh, breathe or do work that's more appropriate for us to do more better return on investment. So the question is, is it okay to not be in the room when you've delegated something to somebody else, when somebody else is working on your business? Do we need to feel guilty When we hire people to do the work we don't have time to do, or maybe don't even want to do, like that's okay, right? Should we feel badly when we hire somebody to do the work that isn't the best work or the smartest work for us to do? Oh, guilt. You know, are we worthy of allowing somebody else to do a job that we could do? Sure, we could do it, but maybe we should not be doing it or don't want to do it. And I notice that this is not just a business problem. I struggle with this at home sometimes too. Like my husband will be emptying the dishwasher and maybe I'll be watching TV, but feeling guilty. Or um, I'll have my son doing his chores like folding laundry and I'm maybe in my bedroom reading, feeling guilty. You know, do I need to be there in the room just to watch and say, great job, you're doing awesome, let me keep you company, just to witness the work? You know, am I a terrible person because I believe it's okay to hire somebody to do a job without feeling guilty that I'm not sitting next to them, maybe cheering them on and clapping and giving them the thumbs up or just keeping them company? We are allowed to take time off without guilt. And this episode is as much for me as it is for you. 
We are allowed to not be in the room when somebody else is doing their job. We don't have to be all the things to all the people. I mean, you could still feel the guilt, but I promise you, your feeling guilt does not change the other person's experience. So, you know, for example, when I felt guilty taking time away from being at the fitness studio, that guilt ate me up alive and it made me doubt myself, but it did not change the fact that that employee still felt lonely and resentful. But that is not my problem. Like that's not for me to fix. That's her work that she has to do. And maybe we needed to have a conversation about it, right? Guilt doesn't help you, nor does it help other people. Because I know that it's hard to take time off when you feel this way. And everything I'm saying, like, don't feel guilty. It's easier said than done, right? Let me give you another example. I had a client who desperately needed to stop working in her business. Um, she was doing a whole bunch of administrative stuff. And her, like where she should have been was way up here, working out in the world, connecting with people, developing relationships, selling their service. What she was doing was an absolute freaking waste of time. She should have been selling, not administrating. And this was a mistake I made too in my first business. So it's absolutely one of the most foundational things I teach my new clients. And turning her around on this was very hard because she felt so guilty. She had a deeply seated belief that she should have been sitting next to her assistant while her assistant was in the office making phone calls and following up with paperwork. Like, hell no, that is not for somebody at her level to do. That is why we hire people. It's an absolute waste of her genius which was connecting with people and helping people. That's where her zone of genius was. And it also did not help that her, cl- that her uh, assistant made snarky, passive-aggressive comments, passive-aggressive comments to her about where she was. Um, she kind of made comments about like, well, you're never in the office. And my client felt so guilty, but she was also pissed about that. We had a lot of work to do around that. And I understood because I had been there too. So one of the things that we did, and you can do this too, there are three things. One, we strategized how she should be spending her time more effectively, like where should she be in her business? Two, we had to manage her mindset about the guilt and the old stories. And that's not easy work to do. She really needed some support with that. And then three, we had to build systems so that the procedures and the communications were in place, like so the models were created because we had to change the employee expectations and the employee behavior. P.S. She wound up firing that assistant because of many things that happened, but um, far later than I wanted her to. And I'm not saying to ignore the people who are doing the work with you or for you because good leaders, like they notice that work and they validate that work and they offer insights and they, they communicate. I am saying you can do all of that and you don't need to be in the room every second. You find freedom and more time when you hire good people and just let them do their job. So remember that this whole month I'm talking about how to get more time back and making life a little easier for yourselves. How can you make life easier for yourself? Well, first, well-run businesses and well-run homes have policies and procedures to help things work, places where things live. This is the way we do things. This is what to expect because without systems, there is no freedom for you. And if systems is something that you struggle with, actually, you're going to love my podcast uh, next week, next month, because we're going to be talking about systems next month. So my big question of creating systems is do your people, and that may be your virtual assistant or your, uh, your secretary or your employees or your staff or your spouse or your kids, do they know what they are supposed to be doing. Is that clear? And second, do they know how to do it? Have you really trained them how? I know that it's a pain in the neck to train people, but have you put those systems in place? The second thing to get more time back is to change your mindset about what it takes to implement the systems I'm talking about. If you tell yourself that it's just easier for me to do it, or I do it better than this person, then you are never going to move out of your current cycle of hell, which is the pain that you're in. Yes, there is set up on the front end of policies and procedures and systems and teaching others how to do the work in the way that you want it done is time consuming. But then they'll do it in a way that meets your expectations. And yes, there is an element of tracking and managing. Like when I started to teach Jack how to fold laundry, I had to track him and manage him. And that was a pain in the ass up front. But now I can just say, Jack, go change the washer to the dryer and fold that laundry and put it away. And it's done in a way that meets my expectations because I put the time in up front. So if you never change your mindset on letting people do their job, 
In fact, if you are still not hiring people to do the jobs you don't want to do, you will still be doing these terrible tasks that you hate doing. And I want you to think about that. Think about a task that you dislike in your business or your life. Do you spend like two hours a week doing it? Maybe you're like, ah, it's just two hours, no big deal. But you tell yourself it's easier to do it myself and I'll just take those two hours and do it. But over the course of a year, you will have spent 104 hours doing this thing that you absolutely hate. 104 hours. How many days is that? And maybe you could have just spent five to 10 hours implementing the system and training the person and following up with the person. Five to 10 hours versus 104 hours. That is a huge difference. So be nice to your future self because ultimately you deserve time to yourself without constantly explaining yourself, without constantly doing work that you shouldn't be doing. And are you making your life easier? Because I promise you that when you make life easier for you, everybody in your world is happier. Your employees will be happier when you're happier. Your family will be happier when you're happier. This is why you deserve happiness because when you're happy, other people around you are happy. And when you are unhappy, it works the same way. Other people are unhappy. And if you want to learn how to master time and create more space in your life, then I invite you to look at the idea space. It's a group coaching program that helps you master time. That is the very first thing that you will be able to do in this program. And it will change your life to know that I don't need huge systems. I don't need to overhaul my life. I can make small tweaks and bring my idea to life. So go check out jenliddy.com forward slash idea space and learn what that's all about. And next week, I'm going to bring an interview to you. This is a woman who is a busy, busy mom who is very oppressed in her time. And we are going to listen to how she shifted things in teeny tiny ways to find the space to bring her idea to life. So I hope you tune in then. Thank you so much for checking in with me. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more free tools and video trainings at www.jenliddy.com slash free sources. That's F-R-E-E sources. If you found this podcast helpful, I'd be so grateful if you subscribed and gave a review. And if you have a friend who'd benefit from today's topic, tool, or strategy, please share the Idea Space podcast with her. That way, together, we can help more women achieve their dreams and take action on their ideas. Isn't it time we all were able to get what we want? Join me next week. And remember, right now, all you need to do to make your idea a reality is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.